Authors, you are recognized for a four-minute opening statement, and you may begin to re when ready, and the chamber will come to order. Uh, Rowan Reed, representing Kentucky. Connor Bush, representing Louisiana and Delmiation. Um, we reserve the right to hear the remainder of our opening statement for That reservation is unnecessary, but accepted. Eyewitness lineups have recently been the subject of harsh criticisms because of their low reliability and obvious role in the wrongful conviction of innocent men in light of DNA evidence. The American Judicature Society stated that the misidentification by eyewitnesses was the leading cause of wrongful conviction in more than 75% of the first 200 or so DNA exonerations in the United States. Using eyewitness lineups as concrete evidence is not only flawed, considering it's incorrect 34 to 38% of the time, it is also unconstitutional in many aspects. The intention of our court system is to protect the defendant, in other words, innocent until proven guilty. However, recently we have seen a shift from innocent until proven guilty to guilty until proven innocent. By no longer enabling eyewitness lineups to be used as admissible evidence, we will not only be upholding the integrity of the federal court system, but will also be protecting the right the defendant has to a fair trial as stated in the Sixth Amendment. The eyewitness lineups may still be used as an investigative tool by the police, just as a polygraph is, but similar to a polygraph, the information obtained by the school will not be presented in front of the jury. Additionally, the lineups are not the only evidence in most court cases. DNA, testimonies, pictures, videos, etc. will still enable a criminal to be put away. Again, Carter Bush, Louisiana Delegation. I would like to go over the psychological aspect of this <clears throat> lineup system. Whenever someone has a traumatic event, they often have different types of effects from an after, or symptoms, if you will. One of those is known as post-traumatic stress disorder, where people will change important aspects of this, including faces of people, to, a, to attest to different experiences and problems they've had in their life. I found this information from the National Center for Bi Biological Information. Also, another case study from off this car crash, where People were asked about how fast the car was going when they hit, and then hit was subjected or was substituted with different words such as collided, smash, ran into, etc. Now, smash was the one that yielded in the most amount of high, fast-paced stuff. So, for instance, if I was to ask you different questions and based on different experiences you've had, your mind would automatically go to different things based on those sorts of experiences. For example, a month later, they were asked if the class was present. And most people said no. However, two people were in a car wreck two weeks before this question was asked, and they said yes, glass was present. Although glass was never mentioned before, nor anything of that sort. Ladies and gentlemen, this needs to be changed. I'd like to yield the man of our time for our closing summation. The authors have yielded one minute and 10 seconds to their closing summation. I'd also just like to go over one thing really quickly with uh, res respect to gavel knocks. One knock will indicate 30 seconds remaining, regardless of how long the speech is. Two raps will indicate 15 seconds remaining. With that, the floor is now open for four minutes of non-debatable technical questions. The chair would like to recognize questions from the chamber. The chair recognizes Jones, Reigns, Smith, Reed, Rodriguez, Hoke. Please approach the microphones. You can begin asking questions in the order that you reach the microphone rather than the order recognized by the chair. Thank you, author. Um, cross racial lineups are also um, a point of interest in our uh, in our proposal because when you're um, trying to identify someone that's of a different race than you, you have a lot um, more like a chance to mess up and identify the wrong person. Jay Jones from the Georgia delegation. Is it true that in the United States, uh, satanic ritual abuse cases, that children were found to be more likely to confabulate and falsely identify people who were supposedly uh, mistreated them under pressure? That is very correct. Thank you. Seth Riana from Florida. Um, thank you, Chair. Will this apply to federal and um, state investigations or, um, and convictions, or is federal? Um, the proposal is just federal, but it will uh, serve as a model for the states that they would like to implement it after it's proven. Alex Rodriguez, Model United Nations. Uh, how does the reliability uh, of the polygraph compare to that of the lineup? Um, the 
the reliability of a polygraph is approximately the same as the reliability of a lineup, and polygraphs are not allowed to be used in our court system. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Colin Smith, and I am for it. Um, do you know that it's a fact that the, the judge does have the right to accept or deny evidence in their courtroom? Um, yes, they do, but the burden falls on the defense. And Thank you, Arthur. The chair would like to recognize further questions from the floor. The chair recognizes Coletti. Any further questions? The chair recognizes the delegate from Massachusetts. Uh, Chow, Rivera, please approach the microphones. How often is psychological distress present in victims and our witnesses of the market? You know, seventy percent of the time. Uh -oh. Uh, thank you, Camilla Rivera, District of Columbia Delegation. In your speech, you stated that 75% of the DNA are grave cases were, um, were uh, because of the, the identification number. You said the first, when were these first exonerated cases uh, done? I think it began in the 1960s. Future questioners should display their placard while asking questions. I'm sorry. Thank you, Delegate. Mr. Chairman, my name is Drew Baker and I am from Florida. Will you please elaborate on the procedure for selecting a lineup? The lineup procedures are different in every state and in every aspect. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no like solid uh, regulations for every procedure. Thank you. And with that, the time for non-debatable technical questions has elapsed. The chair would like to remind the chamber that intent speech signups for proposals 146, 327, and 105 remain open at the parliamentarian's desk. At this time, it is in order for a con intent speaker from this proposal. Uh, because there is no registered con intent speaker, the chair would like to recognize one from the floor. The chair recognizes Delegate Smith. Thank you, Sir Chair. Delegate, uh, please approach the podium. Lineup of the suspect would no longer be in court. So I pose to you 
how would these people make a conviction in court? Because now there's no evidence. So even though the reliability is very low, like I've said before, they have to have a lot of eyewitness lineups before they're allowed to use it as evidence. Because like I've stated before, the justice will not, the judge will not accept it in this court because he does have the right to do so. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Delegate. At this time, the Chair would like to recognize a pro and tech speaker from the floor. The chair recognizes the Delegate McLaughlin.
first of all, I'd like to say I think it's really fantastic. It aids in the law enforcement, the judicial process, and anyone who can remember. The lineups are confusing process to witnesses and can be misleading to the court system. They are similarly accurate to polygraphs, which have been declared inaccurate, so inaccurate that they aren't permissible evidence in court. This is an outdated process that needs to be changed. I am in full support of this proposal. The statistics for those wrongly convicted uh, by lineups are staggering. Modern evidence that although not flawless, is exponentially more accurate, such as DNA, there is no reason to rely on such flawed process in these lineups. This is the reason I urge you to write this bill or vote by his actions, the delegate is yielded his time to the chair. Uh, this time, amendments are in order and will remain so for the next 20 minutes. Also, the parliamentarian would like to announce that uh, request that delegates only approach the desk when it is not disruptive, meaning not in the middle of somebody's speech, uh, and also not if there are already several delegates gathered at the desk. But at this time, it is in order for a con speech. The chair would like to recognize a con speaker. The chair recognizes the delegate from Alabama. Oh. Thank you, Sir Chair. Ingram's family in Alabama. Will the authors please yield to a possible series of questions? Authors, will you yield? Yes, we will. <coughs> All right. Suppose a police officer, no, not a police officer. Suppose an eyewitness sees a man pull up in a car, shoot somebody, the man drives off, taking all evidence, any DNA evidence with him. And the person who saw the man do this saw a good look at his face. Then they identified the man correctly. Or identified the man. Would that then by this by this by this proposal, would that say that uh, the person is not viable to be tried as guilty? The police from that point on to be able to further their investigation from having that suspect in front of Again, the police began to use this as an investigative tool. They just can't use it in the court of law. Uh, I yield for Mayor Martin and Chair. Thank you, Delegate. At this time, the Chair would like to recognize a pro speaker. Chair recognizes Delegate Gustafson. Thank you, Chair. Eric Gustafson, New York State. Um, I reserve my right to yield my remaining time uh, to Baker. So reserved. Um, we live in an imperfect world, and I'm sure we can all admit that. Um, but further than that, we have constructed an imperfect court system. No matter how well constructed it is, there are flaws because of human nature. Now, what this proposal does is the absolute, uh, the, the, the best thing we in America can do. And that is to identify an inherently flawed process and remove it before more innocent people go to jail or more free killers or uh, free criminals uh, or more criminals walk free. Um, basically, I, I support this proposal because there really is nothing wrong with it. It's saying that there is specific evidence that is inherently flawed that we can no longer use, and that is perfectly fine because in our day and age, there are many, many alternatives that uh, can be used in, in a court of law. Also, it is still going to be able to use for investigative purposes, which is really the only way, reason, um, a lineup should be used. I, I yield the remainder of my time uh, to Baker. The author yields one minute for the, the delegate. Thank you, fellow delegate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Drew Baker, and I am from Florida. Uh, my fellow delegates, in the late uh, 20th century, a man named Brandon Cotton was wrongly convicted of a rape because he was wrongly identified in a court lineup, went through the trial process, and went through a life sentence in jail before he was exonerated because DA evidence overturned his conviction. My fellow delegates, we live in the 21st century. This was introduced as a system for identifying uh, felons before DNA evidence was at the quality it was today. So I believe that this way of identifying possible felons is far outdated. They have to be identified in the court of law anyway by witnesses and the uh, plaintiff at uh, each point. So I believe we should vote in favor of this proposal and I yield the remainder of my time to the chair. Thank you, Delegate. At this time, the chair would like to recognize a con speaker. The chair recognizes the delegate from Wisconsin.
That is your right once you state your name and delegation. Hold on, I've got to delegate. We are all biased. In group bias, self serving bias, confirmation bias, unconditional positive regard, etc. Yes, I would I would just line up some clause. When we need witnesses in order to decipher other provided evidence and expose motives. If we all just went by with a paper or a note or other physical evidence that we see, it may be tampered with or um, no, let's be um, and by using an eyewitness bias, it may, it may be wrong 35% um, uh, of the time. But there still is some truth in what they are saying. The fact of the matter is, if they say, when they were, if they saw a car crash, for example, they may have misseen or misinterpreted uh, the, the glass breaking on the car. But if they saw a car and they were present, and they may have seen a person, and that, that may be enough to get somebody um, who was a criminal convicted and put into jail. Um, because we don't have time to. The delegate yields 55 seconds. Um, the reason that I cannot support this proposal is because it does not go far enough, and I want to tell you why. If you have a witness that is uh, shown an eye uh, uh, lineup during the investigative process, they are going to identify whoever they think did that crime. And even though that same lineup cannot be used in a court of law, they will still recognize the face. I, I wholly agree with the intent of this proposal. But you need to eliminate lineups completely. You do not have them for investigative purposes. With that, I do. Thank you, Delegate. At this time, the Chair would like to recognize a final pro speaker. The chair recognizes Delegate LaFrance. Uh, memories of faces. Why can't they have misconstructed uh, memories of the whole story? 
Um, several examples that people have presented have been about people telling stories that people make up in their head. I think that we're putting a lot of disrespect in witnesses by assuming that they can't even tell the story correctly, according to these arguments. Um, second of all, we have also spoken about how there's lots of other evidence that can be um, that can be used to convict a criminal. That is very, very true. If that is true, if we have a lineup, someone who's selected from that lineup probably won't be convicted until there's other evidence. Judges don't use um, face lineups to convict people these days because we know we can use DNA evidence. Um, this is more just to set people in the right direction, to have a general direction that they can look. And if that's proven that that's not the situation, then that person will be let off and they'll take other directions. Um, I, again, I really do uh, applaud the proposal author's intent, but I would like for you to consider these arguments before you make a decision about this proposal. Thank you, and I yield the remainder of my time to the chair. Thank you, Delegate. With that, it is now in order for the authors to make closing statements. Authors, you are recognized for your four-minute, 20-second uh, summation speech. Thank you. Um, just to address some of the, uh, the other points that were brought up, someone said multiple witnesses uh, must be used in these court cases. Well, as of October 2011, that wasn't true. In many states, such as Louisiana and Texas, only one eyewitness lineup identification is needed to put someone in jail. All right, in the case of Henry James, he was sent to jail based on two eyewitness um, lineups, and he was sent to jail for 30 years before DNA evidence set him free. Okay, uh, another point was they were saying that they would rather a few innocent people go to jail as, as long as more guilty people go to jail. Well, if these innocent people are in jail, that means the guilty people who really did the crimes are on the street. All right, evidence tampering was also brought up. Eyewitness lineups can be tampered with, with too. The police can give cues helping um, the witness identify who is, uh, who is the perpetrator that they want them to do. As if they're going through a photo lineup and they're just looking, the police can say, take your time if they're not going towards the suspect that they really want them to. Um, there's also, they're under extreme amounts of stress and want um, to identify the perpetrator. So that's also another problem. And we're not trying to disrespect witnesses here. We're just trying to respect the people who are being said that they did this crime. We're trying to protect their constitutional right to a fair trial. Thank you again, everybody. I'm Connor Bush, representing the Louisiana Delegation. I also want to start off with another incident where someone was put away for over 30 years. Kerry Max Cook. I heard him speak over this summer. And you know what? He was innocent. He was very innocent. But over 20 years before the case was presented, he changed a little bit. He got a little bit fatter, wasn't as in good of shape. His beard kind of grew out. He got a little bit longer hair. And the eyewitness was sure that it was him. But they were wrong. Carrie Max Cook, again, had to serve over 30 years in jail. And 12 of those years was on death row. He was the most brutalized and attacked and assaulted prisoner in history. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not want innocent people in jail. To address that previous delegate who had mentioned that, I wouldn't want to be in jail right now because then I wouldn't be able to be here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm an innocent person. That very well could have been me. 343 out of 500 people were innocent in the case study. And you know what? That eyewitness swore it was them on all 343 of those people. But they got exonerated from DNA evidence. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to stop this. Uh, uh, and to address another previous delegate about the fabricated or hypothetical five people coming to a bank and verbalizing it, again, this eyewitness lineup can be used for a police tool. It can be used for a police tool, they can investigate that person further, and then when it's not proven true, they get to let it go. But if it was a court system and they could use this in the court of law, which again, we have stated so many different times, then jurors take this for credit, they take this, they're reliable. Judges don't, judges may, my, may realize that this is not as reliable, but jurors don't, they're average people. They don't understand the psychological aspects that people suffer through. That's what we're trying to explain to y'all. And to address another previous delegate about how these are arguments and that we're disrespecting people, these are not arguments, these are facts, ladies and gentlemen. These are facts, they are not arguments. They also, they can still be used again in the police. They can be used as an investigative tool. This is biased by nature. Okay, well, let's remove some of the bias from the system. Let's do it. This is what we're trying to do. We've done it for these polygraphs. We need to do it again. And as far as witnesses being distracted when they're being 
burglarizer attacked? Yes, because when a weapon enters the arena, when it enters the innocent, your eyes and your focus goes directly to them every time. Try it out. Think what happens whenever someone pulls a knife out or someone pulls some sort of weapon out, a gun. Your eyes immediately go to it and you forget everything else. And as far as the jury, again, I just can't express this enough about how, it, how often this happens. And ladies and gentlemen, one last comment I'd like to make. People struggle under extreme pressure. Some people don't perform well. And this is what it's trying Thank to do. Thank you, Dougie. Your time has elapsed.